Uh, hi guys, so we're going to be answering some of the questions that you asked us online. For those of you who don't know us, I'm Artemis. And I'm Vaila. And we're both from Amitar Ashram. And so we'll start um, for a minute or something with a short and sweet sound meditation. So close your eyes now. And find a comfortable position for your body. Any position. Yourself first to the breath. And then deepening that with the feeling of your own existence, the I am. I am consists of this present moment of awareness. Being in the body, being present in the now. And slowly opening your eyes, bringing movement back into the body. Thank you. Um, okay, so we had some people uh, send us some questions that they have. Q and A's are something that we do twice a week at the ashram, and. Uh, yeah, we can just get right into it. So the first question is actually a pretty big question. Um, someone wrote us asking, what is awakening? Um, it's hard to exactly put something like what is awakening into words. Um, and I would also say that there are different degrees of awakening. Um, there can be simple aha moments where something clicks for you and you recognize that you know or understand something that you didn't before. Maybe even a simple phrase like letting go that is repeated consistently throughout yoga and meditation classes. And then you one day understand more deeply what it means to actually let go or to forgive or to open your heart or something like this. So this would be a certain degree of an awakening uh, in your process of understanding who you are. And then there are more um, deeper, we could say, awakenings um, that are quite profound when we're having a true awakening. It's lasting. It's uh, to put into words or to try to put into words. It's awareness, becoming aware of itself. And in that, we dissolve as a person, as a mind, as a thought pattern into this limitless, unfathomable, indescribable vastness. And this can happen in all sorts of ways. Now, anything can really trigger this. There's been many different paths and religions and practices that can trigger this kind of deep awakening. But when it's really, um, yeah, and then we could even break that into two different degrees in that um, sometimes you have that kind of awakening and then you have this kind of got it, lost it experience um, which definitely happened to myself and um, I was devastated I thought I was enlightened and <laughs> lost it and then there's something that lasts 
that um, at least I can only speak from my own experience comes from this knowing that that recognition is has always been there and is what I always am and it's not one event that happens I would also say that that's like that you've, you've crossed a line and it's done it's like a continuous unfolding although there may be a significant moment that you can point to where you never really forgot. Yeah, I, I would um, agree. Um, there's, a, there's often discussion amongst people who do spirituality of whether it's um, a sudden awaken or awakening or a gradual awakening. But we have to also understand and maybe put um, a definition on what is awakening or what is an awakening. Of course, an ultimate awakening is something that uh, we can never forget. But then, as um, Artemis said, that we can also have these, these um, smaller awakenings, which equal, eventually, mm. the grand awakening. So, although it's a, it's a hard uh, concept and understanding to grasp and we also shouldn't fool ourselves about what awakening is. It's, it's really something that feels so profound to us that it's hard to even put it into words. It's really the recognition of being. It's often considered to be the first stage. That are the recognition that I exist, that I exist as an ultimate form that I exist in every being in this universe and every object and every thing in this universe and every thought at the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, it is quite a profound um, understanding and teaching. Yeah, I would also add that sometimes the profundity of it comes from the simplicity at the same time in, in that we can rec the recognition that this isness is always here in all moments um, it's, it's the extraordinary in the ordinary um, for myself, I got a lot like lost for a long time in thinking that awakening was bliss. And although bliss might be a byproduct of awakening, it's not awakening itself. Um, when resting in our being, we still have a person, we still experience emotions, we still walk with two legs. Um, it's still a very ordinary life. So there can be this unattainable belief that enlightenment for these people behind us even is that you're always happy, you're always joyful, you're, you're always, uh, I don't know, perfect and pure. And ultimately, yes, you, you are always resting in this contentment. There is peace. But then our person can also go through its motions of, of loss, of, of anger, of grief, of these kinds of things as well. So that's also really worth mentioning in terms of the awakening. Mm -hmm. And that, that process of awakening can, is considered often sometimes as, a, as an infinite process, really. Because what we're doing is we're bringing the unmanifest into the manifest. So it's a constant, it's a constant uh, fruitfulness. It's a constant blossoming of that unmanifest into the manifest. Mm -hmm. um, and all of these masters, um, at least most of them, will agree that it's an unfolding of spirit into the manifest rather than a sudden awakening and then everything is solved. Often people who have this sudden awakening and they feel that everything is solved and then they continue 
or they then go about living their life without any need or feeling that they want to grow. Often they will be the, the masters who we read about, who we uh, hear about, who have kind of fallen off their uh, off the path, basically, or ones who have a lot of uh, difficulties arising around them because the spirit has not been fully integrated into the, the personality, you could say. 